Good evening. My name is Ryan Patterson, and I'm a senior in business management with a minor in leadership studies. Tonight, I have the privilege to introduce you to one of the first faces I met at K-State. I started working with this individual as a freshman when I took his Introduction to Leadership Concepts class. I was in a service learning section where we learned and practiced leadership while working with the Kansas Make-A-Wish Foundation. We were inspired by this individual to make a true difference in the community from the coursework we were doing. From that semester on, I have worked on numerous projects for Leadership Studies, Wildcat Warm-Up, and my fraternity where this individual has been willing to step in and go above and beyond and help out. The more I've gotten to know him, the more I've really truly wanted to become like him as a future student affairs professional. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce you to a teacher, a mentor, a friend, and so much more to myself and countless K-State students. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Mike Finnegan. Dr. Patterson, thank you very much for the, uh, for the introduction. I call him Dr. Patterson because little does he know, but by the time he's 30, he'll have his PhD. Today, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about service learning, the power of two words. And I think the best way to do that is through a narrative, through a story, to kind of share with you how I became an advocate of student learning and the, uh, 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 of service learning in the work that I do. First off, I believe that leadership and service are closely linked together. In fact, how we think about leadership influences how we practice leadership. So wouldn't it make sense that we think about leadership in the context of service, in the context of community, to where we can really think about what we're learning and connect this through a service learning model? It'd be wonderful if we could capture all the energy from the faculty, from the students, from the community partners to do good work that influences and enhances the communities that we live in, the K-State community, the Manhattan community. My gosh, think, imagine, a global community. We could do that type of work. But it wasn't always like that. When I first started out at K-State, I imagined my work in this space. How on earth am I to fill this space? I filled it with knowledge. I controlled the content. And yeah, I was a little creative in how I delivered the content, but at the end of the day, I was kind of the sage on the stage. And I didn't necessarily like that role. I didn't like talking at my students. Gosh, I wanted to talk with my students. But students absorbed the material, they did well, and I believe that they learned. When I first started thinking about service, it wasn't service learning, it was more community service. And my primary motivation was to say, gosh, let's get students outside of the classroom. Go out, collect canned food goods, do something good for the Flint Hills bread basket. Students formed teams, they had goals, and at the end of the day, gosh, they felt good about contributing back to the Manhattan community. But it was very much just direct service and volunteerism. And then one of my colleagues challenged me. She said, hey, Finn, let's build something. So not only did we build a building, gosh, we built service learning into our curriculum. And it mattered. Students not only still went out to do the direct service, but they, start about, they started to think about the complexity of issues. They started to unpack this idea of hunger and to think about the social, the economic, and the political impact that leads to the complexity of this hunger issue that we face today. We had models, so we weren't just doing this because it felt good, but we thought, gosh, pair. Let's prepare our students. Let's get them out into the community to have some sort of action. And then let's create space so they can reflect on that action as they exercised leadership and evaluated their work. So gosh, hopefully they'd be more informed and better citizens and stewards of this responsibility that we have as community members. We thought we were doing good work until Trish then brought Patty Clayton, uh, Dr. Clayton, an expert in service learning, uh, engagement, teaching and learning, brought Patty to campus. And Patty challenged us with two words. She said, Mike, I'd like you to think about what it means to provide a service for people versus what it means to provide a service with people. I had to put this into a context that I was familiar with, so I started to think, gosh, what does it look like when I exercise leadership with others versus what does it look like when I exercise leadership for others? Four is kind of a deficit model. Gosh, I've got power, I've got ability and skill. Let me do something for you. 
versus maybe saying, let me do something with you because you're bright, you're creative, and you're talented, and together we can co-create and do something special. I used to write letters of recommendation for my students. Hey, Mike, will you write me a letter of rec? Absolutely. Tell me the when and the where and the who. I'll send it out by next week, Tuesday. Now, I write letters of recommendation with my students. I say, hey, come on in. Schedule an appointment. Let's fill in the gap as to uh, the last time I had you in class. Tell me what it is that makes your heart beat about this internship or about this graduate school. I want to know about you because if I know about you, I can write a letter, better letter of recommendation with you. And so it transcended how I started to work and how I started to think by two little words of with and for. So how did that translate to the classroom? Prior to this spring, a community partner who has worked and done a, a lot of work with the School of Leadership Studies, Diana Chapel, the Ogden Friendship House, Diana and I met at Redina's and we co-created a syllabus so students understood that we were serious when we talked about community partners. We weren't just talking about community partners. Gosh, we were talking about Ogden Friendship House, partnering with Diana Chapel. What was cool about that experience is that Diana was so excited about the creation of the syllabus, she then showed up on the first day of class to build community with our students, with a partner. And what was cool about that is that out of that last eight classes that we've had, Diana's been an active member in our classroom community for the last three. This weekend, Saturday night, our students went out and actually hosted a dinner for the Ogden community so they could learn firsthand about the issues that impact the citizens who care the most about the community that they live and work in. So it was powerful learning outside the classroom walls. I'm hoping that our students not only then see themselves as members, and understand that volunteering is important, but that they start to say, gosh, what does it mean to be an actively engaged citizen in the communities where I live and work? Because at the end of the day, with students, with faculty, we get a chance to co-create with our students and create something special. And so I challenge you all to really think about integrating this idea, this concept of service learning into your classroom, because I believe that if we get out into the communities where we can exercise leadership, we're teaching students valuable skills that transcend the work that they're doing outside of the content, outside of the degree completion, but it actually matters. It matters most because it matters to the communities where we really have an opportunity to make an impact in the lives of others. Thank you very much.